I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is PsychAx Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is the stress diathesis model of mental illness. Now, this is an ungainly technical phrase, the stress diathesis model, but it's actually a fairly simple concept. It's a way to explain the pathogenesis of mental illness, or where mental illness comes from. The dominant social view of mental illness is that it is caused by an imbalance in brain chemistry, a narrative that obviously supports the goals of the pharmaceutical industry. However, the fact of the matter is that there is very little evidence to support this theory. Take for example the popular belief that depression is caused by a deficit of serotonin. If this were the case, we should expect to see low serum serotonin levels in depressed individuals and non-low serum serotonin levels in non-depressed individuals. But that's not what we see. Rather, we see that serum serotonin level is pretty much normally distributed across the population. Some depressed people have high serum serotonin levels, and some non-depressed people have low serum serotonin levels. In fact, the inventor of this theory, known as the monoamine hypothesis, recanted his position over 30 years ago due to a lack of supporting evidence. However, it continues to enjoy popular support to this day. An alternative to this theory, which enjoys significantly more support in the empirical literature, is the stress diathesis model, which basically says that an individual under sufficient stress will eventually come to respond to that stress in increasingly dysfunctional ways. You can think of it kind of like your immune system. Generally, when your immune system is functioning well, the bacteria and the viruses and the cancer cells that are actually always present within your body are pretty much kept in check. They don't evolve into disease processes because you are healthy and resilient enough to attend to them. However, if your immune system is corroded over time through poor nutrition or lack of exercise or chronic stress, then it won't be able to respond as effectively to these continuous assaults and the disease process begins in earnest. Well, the same thing happens with your mental health. If you're having a difficult time at work and you're going through a breakup and you're not getting enough sleep because you're ruminating on negative thought patterns and you're drinking too much, then all of these things are gonna to conspire to make it increasingly difficult for you to exercise natural resiliency to overcome the difficulties you happen to be facing in your life. And that's when the disease process, the mental illness, fluoresces, when there's a confluence of factors that make it increasingly harder for dysfunctional responses to be kept in check. The important thing to keep in mind here is that the research suggests that it's the number of stressors a person is facing, not the intensity of the stressors, the number of stressors that really plays the pivotal role in determining whether natural resiliency is compromised to the extent that a mental illness emerges. We can handle one, maybe even two or three significant setbacks concurrently. But when we get to six, seven, eight, it becomes very difficult to keep our heads above water something to keep in mind. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, drop a comment below. And if you'd like to schedule a consultation, you can reach me at psychaxpodcast at gmail.com. Talk to you soon.